Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will look at how do we evaluate your integration data in the Logic App with the help of switch case. There are, there are some scenarios wherein you receive the data in your integration workflow and you would like to evaluate the data based on the certain conditions. For example, let's say what if my order status is released, what if our order status is return or fulfill or maybe rejected in all those conditions what exactly you want to do with that data or with that with what do you want to do in, on those specific condition and how do you want to flow your logic within the integration this is what we are going to look at in this demonstration hi my name is rakesh surivanshi and you're watching be a learner for this demonstration, I have the standard logic app. The name of the logic app I have given as the standard lab. This logic app has been created inside the, as in the standard logic app type and which is supported by this app service plan and this storage account. Currently, this logic app has these workflows. I'm going to create a new workflow for the demonstration and I'll call it as a switch condition. The workflow type is going to be the stateful type. The workflow is ready now. I'll go to the designer and the trigger type which is uh, it will ask me to create a trigger type, which is a very first step in any workflow. To specify the trigger type, I'm going to use the request, which is HTTP trigger type when the HTTP request is received. And here we need to specify the request body schema payload so that my request will be validated against the incoming request schema JSON. Now I have a sample request available here, which I'll be using to generate this schema. To generate a schema, we can click here on the use sample payload to generate the schema. I'll paste the JSON which I have. So let's say in this JSON, I'm going to also add the order status value. Order status, let's say confirm that's it based on the sample request it has created the it has created a json schema which i can use to validate the incoming request that's it now next thing what we want to do is we would like to have a look at the data what we have received. So I'm going to use the compose actions to uh, draft the data what we have. I'll use the body, so which is request body. So you can see that when uh, we are getting the all the attribute what we have available within this previous step, which is when HTTP request is received. So I'm going to use the request body, which will be receiving it. So compose a request I'll say okay next thing what we want to do is we would like to evaluate the order status and based on the order status we would like to perform the different different actions and for that we are going to use the switch condition to specify the condition block you have to scroll it down and then within the action spelling at the right side or bottom right if you scroll down, you would find the conditions block and the switch block. This is the switch control block. And within the switch condition block, the very first thing you need to add is the switch on. So on what attribute we would like to evaluate your switch condition. So in this case, I'm going to use the order status value. So that is the value on the basis of which we are going to evaluate our condition. So let's say if 
uh, order status is released then we would like to do this so i'll say case status release i'll add new case and what about this order status is confirm i'll say this add new condition order status is let's say return and then and this default value what we want to do if nothing is matching okay now here in this case i would say if the order status is released then i want to say it's HTTP 200, which is order is created. So I'll say 2010. I'll return the message as in message as your order is, let's say, I'll use this concat operation in the double quotes I'll say order status whatever is the status order status that's it similarly I'll post the message HTTP response action response body confirm so it is confirm response type is confirm and then return order return i would say status is something different which is let's say 300 for example okay and then we have a default condition so in the default condition i would say if anything else is there apart from these conditions uh, so we are going to say 500 which is error save I have not found your order okay save that's it now we have got these conditions and based on this condition your workflow is going to evaluate on uh, your data is going will be evaluated and it will process the information now let's go back to the designer and get the url so i'll copy this url yeah and here i will use the order status property which is this one I'll specify the property as the value. Let's say what if I do not specify first of all what information I'll get it. So it says that server did not response upstream server because it has not uh, validated. It was not really able to validate the incoming request. I guess so it's bad gateway response. So as we have not found your order, uh, which means that release status is not something which is confirm, uh, which is correct. Now, if I use the confirm status here, let's see what happens with the confirm status. You can see that I'm getting the option as a uh, confirm, uh, order is confirmed now. Let's test with some, some other condition, which is let's say released. So your order is released and now if, if we go back and check the history of these runs let's see what happens as you can see that we have three successful run and one of them was failed uh, because we were not passing the correct json payload as per the message um, uh, payload information which what we were expected to do 
as you can see that this time when we uh, pass the order information, the status was released. So it has uh, evaluated the switch condition and it was matching with the release condition. So it was going to the release and it has returned the response back from the release condition. Right. Similarly, if I go back to the uh, previous one, which was the confirm status, then it should evaluate the condition and go to the confirm status and return the response back from that particular condition. So this is how you can use the switch condition uh, in your workflow within the logic app integration. Now for the conditions, I have used the hard coded value in my different cases, but you can uh, in the in the best practices, instead of these hard coded values, you should uh, use the parameters. So for example, I could use the parameter as in uh, order status confirm and then I can provide the value as confirm like this. Okay, which is what do I need. And then if I close this here, I can specify order status confirm, save it like this. Okay, so this is how the as per the best practices, you should use the switch conditions. I hope you have found this demonstration useful and you get an idea how to use the switch conditions within the logic app integration. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.